Hi boys and girls. So I'd love to talk with you about clouds. Have you ever gone out into a field or into a backyard and lay on a blanket in the grass and looked up at all the shapes of the clouds? It's a really fun activity to do. It's a relaxing activity. And sometimes what you can do is imagine that different shapes of clouds are different things. Like say a really long, long cloud, you might say, oh, it looks like a snake. Or a round cloud, you might think that it looks like a stop sign or a circle or anything, a wheel, a tire. Um, there's three main different types of clouds. And I'll show, show you and talk to you about them and I'll draw some for you too. But I have today the cloud book and it's by Tommy De Paola and he did the words and the pictures. So he's both the author and the illustrator of this book. Now it talks a lot about clouds in this story and it also in, it tells you how people came up with ideas about clouds a long time ago, long before we were even born, which is pretty neat. All right, so the cloud book. Pictures are really nice too. Almost any time you go outside and look up at the sky, you can see clouds. Clouds are little drops of water or ice hanging in the upper atmosphere high above the earth. And if you could go hop on a bird and fly way up, you would see the whole earth covered with clouds. That makes me think of a time that I was in an airplane with Maddie and we looked out the airplane window and the clouds were so puffy and it looked like they were cotton candy or a giant pillow that you just wanted to snuggle on. There are many different types of clouds. Some are high up, some are in the middle, and some are low in the sky. The three main kinds are cirrus, cumulus, and stratus clouds. Now those are the three that I wrote behind me and I'll show how to make them in a minute. You can tell them apart by the way they look and by where they are in the sky. Cirrus clouds are white and feathery and they are the highest clouds. So you'll see them way, way high. They are sometimes called mare's tails. A mare is a horse. And so if you look at the shape of his tail and then you look at the clouds up above, kind of reminds you of them. Cumulus clouds are puffy and they look like cauliflower. Have you ever seen cauliflower? Here's a picture down at the bottom. They are always changing shape and they are low down in the sky. Those are the ones that Maddie and I saw in the plane. They were big and puffy like a pillow. Stratus clouds are low also. They look like wide blankets of gray and sometimes they're called high fogs. Drizzle or snow flurries may fall from them. So the stratus ones are the darker, lower clouds. Like when you look up in the sky and you say, oh, those clouds are getting pretty dark. Those are always going to be the stratus clouds. Now, there's also many other types of clouds. They have longer names. So they might take cirrus or cumulus and put parts of those words together to describe all different types of clouds. So some of them end up looking like really neat shapes um, of anything you can have in your imagination. So, circle. Cirrocumulus clouds are small fleecy masses that are hard to see. They're very high up in the sky and some people call them mackerel sky. The French call them moutons, which means sheep. You see some of those look like fish and some of them look like sheep. It's all in your imagination what you think they look like. Cirrostratus clouds are high up too. They cover the sky in thin milky white sheets. When you look at the sun and moon through them, you can see a halo. Cirrostratus clouds are sometimes called bedsheet clouds. Look at the little halo it's making around the moon. They're thin enough to make a really cool reflection. Then we have alto stratus and alto cumulus clouds. They look like sheets of gray or blue. And these are alto cumulus clouds. Cumulus clouds are everybody's favorite because they look so comfy like a big pillow. But these puffs are much larger. They're gray or they're whitish, and if you walk underneath them, you might feel a tiny little bit of drizzle. 
Have you ever been outside and you felt a raindrop and you looked around and thought, where did that come from? Could be from those. Now, Nimbostratus, Stratocumulus, and Cumulonimbus, these are crazy names, guys. Those are all clouds low down in the sky. And what do you see that person has in their hand? An umbrella. Steady rain or snow falls from Nimbostratus clouds. They're easy to see because they're heavy and they're dark. Like, uh-oh, looks like rain. We better go inside. Now, there's other clouds, stratocumulus clouds. They can look like rolls of black and blue clouds together. And they can be seen in the wintertime a lot. Look at these ones, cumulonimbus. Big and poofy, but you see them during a thunderstorm. They look like mountains of very, very tall cumulus clouds. Now, this is something that's interesting that happens. It's called fog. Have you ever gotten up early in the morning and looked outside and thought, boy, it's not as easy to see out there right now. It's because there's fog around. Fog is a cloud, actually, that's made of water droplets that are down here on the ground level. They're not up in the sky. Fog can come right into your front yard, especially if you live near mountains. Look at this girl. She lives near the mountains and the fog is in her front yard. She can't see her goats. <laughs> Up in the mountains, people give special names to clouds. This is one and this is another. One is the banner cloud and another is called the boa cloud. Why do you think they call that a boa cloud? What do we learn about boas? A boa constrictor wraps itself around its prey. So this cloud is wrapping itself around the top of the mountain. This boa is not a cloud, it's just a snake. So neat. Now in the olden days, long before we were born, long before mommies and daddies and grandmas and grandpas were born, okay? People looked at clouds to see things. The Native Americans saw thunderbirds in dark storm clouds. See at the top? The ancient Greeks believed that Hermes, the messenger of the gods, who was also the wind, stole the sun's cattle, which were the clouds. So they imagined that there was a sun that was a person and the clouds got stolen. Oh my goodness. That's funny. In Labrador, which is way up north, people believed that fog was caused, ready, by a white bear who drank too much water and burst. <laughs> now that can't be real, right? But it's what they imagined. So funny. People saw giants and animals and ships and castles in the clouds too. It's fun to lay back and imagine what you can see in the clouds. There's some sayings about clouds that help tell about the weather. So this is what farmers might say. When the fog goes up, the mountain hopping, then the rain comes down, the mountain dropping. So they're saying if it's foggy and we know that the water goes up, it gets evaporated up into the clouds, that eventually the cloud's gonna get heavy and down will come the rain. And that's good if you're a farmer, right? All that water waters all your crops. For people who are traveling, they would say this, evening red and morning gray set the traveler on his way. That's a good thing for a traveler who is leaving. Evening gray and morning red bring down rain upon his head. That's not a good thing for someone who's going to travel. If there are large clouds in the morning, sometimes people say, in the morning mountains, in the evening fountains. They mean if it's sunny in the morning, it might rain at night. And sailors know, sailors in the boats, know that mackerel scales and mare's tails make lofty ships carry low sails. So mackerel scales, which means like a fish scale, and mare's tails, right, the horse tails. So these types of little clouds, if you're a sailor, at the end of the day, could ruin the sail because it's windy and stormy and rough. Oh, man, overboard. So it's just
just a saying. We don't know if it actually happens. These are funny sayings too. If people don't seem to know what they are doing, other people say, he's in a fog. Or, she has her head in the clouds. Have you ever heard those expressions? I think I said that to you one day. I think I said, Mrs. Garrity's head is in a fog. Was my head really in a cloud? No, but that's why it's a saying or an expression. And now, here's a very, very silly cloud story. Da-da. The cloud enters the room. The cloud fills the room. The cloud leaves the room. The room. So you see, clouds are very funny and very interesting. And that's the end of the cloud book.